Hey, scrapbook friends, it's Nicole, and I'm here again with another border idea. I don't actually feel like I do that many borders, but as I was showing some of my um, guests at my retreat last weekend, my album, I came across a couple that I have actually done. I don't usually pre-make them, but when I'm putting a layout together, sometimes I do. And this is one that is for the Be Our Guest restaurant at Walt Disney World in the Magic Kingdom. And so many people commented on it that I realized, oh, hey, maybe this is one that I ought to show uh, to my YouTube friends. So we're going to make this kind of dining out border, I think is what I'm going to call it. Um, super cute. You can, of course, use any colors that work for you, but um, we're wearing pink and yellow in most of these pictures, so that's what I chose to use. All right. So for this border, let's start with the tools. You're going to need the Dine Punch, Dine Border Punch, the Wine Chain Border Maker Cartridge. Of course, you're going to need your Border Maker System, your Straight Trimmer. Then you're going to need a piece of Bronze Shimmer Cardstock for the base, a piece of Platinum shimmer for the silverware, a piece of white for the plates, and then your two colors. And I am using honey mustard and pink taffy. And these are colors that were from the paper buffet or the cardstock buffet earlier this summer. So they're no longer available, but I love the bright colors of these. And so during the cardstock buffet, I bought a couple extra packs for myself. You can use any colors that you want for this. Um, you know, match maybe the cl the clothes that you're wearing, like um, a navy and a red would work if you wanted richer colors, but any, any colors, two colors you want, this just happens to be what I'm going to use. All right, so we're going to start with the bronze shimmer. This is going to be the base for our border, and we're going to cut this at three inches by 12 inches. So that's going to be our base. Three inches is about as wide as I like to go with a border. Sometimes I do go a little bit bigger just because I have to. Um, then we're going to cut our squares to go in the border at two and three quarter inches. And you need two squares of each color. So this works really well if you're going to do borders on both sides like I did with mine but I'm only gonna make one right now so that you don't have to watch me for hours and hours as I put this together. So two squares each that are two and three quarters. And let's see, let me write that down for you. Cut a little piece of this off. I'm gonna use this in just a second for my plates, but. I can spare a piece to give you some measurements. So the base is three by 12 inches. And I use the bronze shimmer. And then the squares are two and three quarter inches, two of each color, two colors. All right, then we're going to do the um, dine. We're going to punch it in platinum and white. And the wine, we'll just punch in white. Okay, so hopefully that will help you um, follow along with me. So let's take the Platinum Shimmer. Um, and this is an interesting border punch because the main focus of it is kind of these the silverware. But I really like the plates. And if you have been to Disney World or you've seen the Mickey's Feel Her Magic or you've watched Beauty and the Beast, I don't think it's in the movie Beauty and the Beast, but at Mickey's Feel Her Magic, there is a scene where they have dancing plates and silverware. And that's kind of what inspired me with this but I really want to have the plates. And on this one, if you punch it the way that it's designed, you end up with a half plate on either end. 
but I want more full plates and fewer half plates. So instead of starting at the black line like you normally do, I want to make sure that I have a whole plate. So I'm going to start my border kind of over here between the the fork and the spoon or the knife and the spoon right there. So that after I cut my whole border, I end up with more whole plates and fewer half plates. And of course, this is totally optional. You could even just cut an extra border or two. But for me, this, um, it was just funner, more fun, sorry. I know that funner isn't a word. I think it should be. Um, it was more fun to cut um, this way. And then I have five full um, plate circles. And I'm actually gonna cut two of those. I'm not sure exactly how many I need. But I'm gonna do the same thing, cut here on the, between the knife and the spoon so that I can get the, get the maximum number of plates. And we are gonna cut these and so odds are good I'm gonna end up with half plates anyway, but this I just feel like gives me more options. So then I just have to come back and cut this other piece. So now we actually have to cut the same thing again um, out of white because we want to just do the white plates. I should have done this ahead of time so you didn't have to wait for me. I will actually fast forward through this next part so that I will just have some quickly cut plates. Okay, I'm still pretty new to this YouTube thing, so hopefully um, that worked to, to zip through the uh, dine punch so that you don't have to watch the whole thing. Um, and I'm, now we're gonna take some scissors. This is a great time for the microchip scissors if you have them, but I went to retreat last weekend and I don't know where mine are. They're probably like in my purse or my suitcase or something. But we're gonna just cut these plates out because I want the silverware to be silver, but I want the plates to be white. And I just think it makes it look cuter. Plus we're gonna cut the wine chain out of white and that just ties it all together. So these do not have to be exactly exact. This is art. It doesn't have to be like a full circle, but just kind of follow the curve of this around as best you can. I think I'll just do these for now. I can't re remember how many. Um, when I made it, I did two pages and I can't remember if I need or two sides and I can't remember how many I needed. So now we're going to take the repositionable tape right here. Um, and I like to use my repositionable tape on one of our guides from the Power Layout Box and Guides. This is like a heavy-ish plastic. Um, I've written on it, you can see with a Sharpie so that I remember it's for repositionable tape because it does leave a little bit of residue, but that way I don't get it on my work surface. And if you've watched my videos, you know sometimes I do get it on my work surface, but don't tell anyone. All right. And you can see that my white white cardstock that I used is actually the back of one of these um, paper pack things. I always tell you to save that and I practice what I preach. So I'm gonna line this up so that the cutouts match. Um, but it doesn't have to be exact. Like I say, a little, um, 
a little variance is okay. All right. Turning these over and they're white on the other side and it's kind of making me worry that I'm... There we go. Cutting in the wrong spot. So I love the reposition book because you can go right over the holes in whatever you punch out and it doesn't stick to the hole, just sticks to the cardstock, except when it's right here. Okay, so this one you can see I kind of messed up with the punching. There's that little gap and it's not quite, quite circular. But I'm not gonna tell anyone and you're not gonna tell anyone. So now I'm gonna start positioning these um, borders on the squares. I suppose you could do the squares first and then um, put the, and then just cut the, cut apart into borders. But since I'm only doing four, um, let's see, just going to kind of, I want them to be different. So I don't want all the plates to line up. It probably would be fine if they all lined up, but I'm just like that. So I do want one. So I guess I'll do one where the plates actually do go off the edge. If I would have punched both sides of this, or if I would do both pieces, and maybe I will do both pieces. So I'll do one that it goes kind of off the edge. So if I were doing double-sided, I would save this other piece, maybe for another square. But I really want one where the plate is smack dab in the middle. So I'm gonna have to punch another set of, oh, I already punched the white, yay. Okay, so I'm just gonna take one plate for now and line that up. All right. So we'll do this right here. Actually, I think I'm gonna do this one so that I can put my plate, like I say, smack dab in the middle but I am putting it down at the bottom half, like, I don't know how to measure. I haven't, I didn't measure this, but I'm just kind of putting it at the bottom part of the squares because I want to leave the top for the wine. Okay, so there's my little squares. Save these for the other half of your layout. You may need to punch another set if you, like me, want to have this variety so that your, you know, your plates don't kind of line up. Hold it like that. Okay. So the wine is easier because I don't care as much about how that is positioned because there's only like three wine cups. There's the, a big, a big cup, a wine bottle, and a small cup. So that's a little bit less, um, gives me less opportunity for variety. So remember with the border maker that you want to flip out the paper positioning guide, open up the magnet strip, align your paper in here, close the magnet, and then flip this out of the way, and then put your cartridge in the holder so that the little teeth are in the front because they line up with these little grooves in the paper guide. And then we're just gonna punch our border. And because these squares are two and three quarters, I can easily get four um, borders. Although now that I look at it, maybe I do want a little bit more variety. We'll see. We'll see how, how I feel about it. But this time I'm just going to take my adhesive and go down the whole thing and position it just across the top. So I'm kind of starting with that edge. I'll do these two next to each other. Okay, 
these two. And then this one gives me a little bit of, I do have a little bit of wiggle room right here. So I can play around if I want a little variety of how the positioning is. Maybe I'll put a bottle at the edge of this one. Oh, there, that worked out just right. Okay, and now I'll just quickly trim these. I love to line up the edge of my scissor with the top paper. I feel like that's just my favorite way. Flip these upside down and cut because then this lines up against the base paper. This one's gonna be a little tricky because I stuck them right next to each other. But there you go, there's my four little pieces. And now we're gonna go ahead and stick these on to our base. And again, I'm gonna position them. I can't remember how I had them because I mixed them up. Um, I'm gonna do it like this. All right, now I'm gonna use my real adhesive because that's what I like. Oh, first you're gonna position them. It doesn't, they don't exactly, exactly space, like there's no easy way to space them. There's, you kind of are gonna have a, a bit more of a gap at the top and bottom than you are between the between the squares. So it's like an eighth of an inch or so between the squares, but then you leave the um, leave the excess at the top and bottom. So and I just eyeball it, but you could measure if you need to. I know some of you need to. All right, so there you have it. That was pretty quick for a little border, wasn't it? Fun way to use the Dine Punch and the Wine Border Maker cartridge. Um, these work so well together, so fun. You could do this for Thanksgiving dinner. This would be really cute if you did like maybe an orange and a uh, yellow on a brown background. I would still use the sil the platinum, the silver and the white, um, but you could do it for Christmas with red and green. Anytime that you, you know, have pictures of people eating, I think this would be a great, a great border to use for those kind of layouts. I hope that this has inspired you and that this is a layout that you will choose to make for your own albums. And I would love to hear about what you think and what colors you chose to use for your wine and dine border. Thanks so much for watching. I sure appreciate your kind comments. And if you would like to subscribe to my channel, that'd be great too. And happy scrapbooking.